Hi, everybody. Welcome to Asian Entertainment and Cultures, Asian in Focus. I am very happy to be joined today by Odisa Abile. In the U.S., we actually pronounce this Abile. She's, she's an author. She has uh, published two books. One is Like a New Sun Rising, a collection of poems on love, and From Where I Stand, a collection of poems on travel. She's also an educator. She's, uh, she's currently teaching English in Vietnam. She's from the Philippines. And we graduated from the same university, University of Santo Tomas. So she will talk about how she ended up teaching English in Vietnam, the differences in the culture there versus the culture in the Philippines, her life there, how she adjusted, and how she ma managed to actually publish her books. And um, this is my co-host, Deba. Hi, Odisa. Hi, Fairlane. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm okay. It's a summer day here in Hanoi, so it's, oh, a, it's so how, very warm. Uh, uh, what's the temperature usually during the um, summer? How hot can it go? During summer, it could get up until 39, 39 30. to 30s, oh, uh, wow. 30, yes, yeah, very hot. So in the Philippines, we'd usually go 32, 29, 32. Yeah. But here, I feel like it's hotter. Oh, wow. But is it humid? Yes, it's humid. And then sometimes it rains in the, uh, in the afternoon and evenings, which is kind of a relief. Right, right. Um, but during the day, it's usually warm. So we're all waiting for autumn and winter here because there are four seasons here in Hanoi. So we can't wait for the cold. <laughs> Does it snow? No, only uh, in the mountains in the north. Oh, uh, okay. They okay. say that yeah, it yeah. snows there. But here, no, it doesn't. Okay. So in, in LA, we usually we do Fahrenheit for some reason. So we do like... Right now, today it went up 105, right? 105. Ooh. Um, but regularly it's like 80 during the summer. So, but I hate the summer, I also hate the heat, mm. so I can't wait for, <laughs> for it to pass, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, how long have you been in Vietnam and how, how are you liking it so far? So, I've been here for over a year, exactly a year, because I came here early June. And how am I liking it? Um, it's totally different from my life back home. Uh, I, I used to live in Las Piñas City in the Philippines. And totally different in so many ways. Because um, I used to live with... During Your COVID, parents. I used to live with my parents. And then um, here, I'm by myself. The language, most of the time, I have to use English. And I had to learn a few basic Vietnamese uh, phrases. In the Philippines, of course, you speak Filipino and most of the people speak English there. Right, so right. So there's no language barrier at all. Um, so, But when you go out to the street and you shop, you go to the grocery, how do you communicate? English or do they know English or you learn just street enough to get you through? Um, so it's so important to know a few phrases. Okay. Um, like to buy in a cafe or to ask how much it is, how much something right. is. Um, but most of the time, I use Google Translate for longer questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's so helpful. Um, and then some English also. So some of the younger people who work in cafes and shops, they can uh, communicate. Oh, so that's so helpful. But here in my area, it's a, it's a local area. And um, I see very few foreigners. So, yeah. so it's so different because in, in the Philippines, almost everybody speaks English or at yeah. the very least they understand English. <laughs> so. Yes. And the signs are all in English. Right, the moment, right. The moment you land in the airport, everything is in English. Um, so that makes it very easy for, you know, Western visitors to the Philippines right. to go around and right, understand right. everything. Okay. Um, but here, yeah, that's, that's a very big uh, contrast. The language yeah okay well let's go to your teaching first um how is it different because you also taught back home right you were also a teacher back home so how is it different from the philippines aside from the fact that you're of course far away from home yes yeah, so in the philippines um i actually i did not teach in a classroom i okay. taught uh, online and smaller classes um but I think that the major difference would be, so let, I'll explain like the system. Right, so right. in the Philippines, I remember when I was, you know, studying in the 90s right. in school, um, there was an English only policy in school. 
So True. you you have to speak English in the classroom, speaking in English to your teachers, uh, with your classmates. And that was kind of the way to train the young kids to to converse in English. Right. Right. And you have to pay one peso if you speak a word of Tagalog <laughs> um, in the classroom. Um, but here, the, all of the subjects are taught in Vietnamese, um, whether it's math or science. And then they have English subjects that are taught by Vietnamese teachers and a foreign teacher. And that's where uh -huh. we come in. So I have a friend uh, who teaches science in English. And that is to teach the children the English translation of like the digestive system, right. part yeah, of yeah. the body, yeah. um, for them to be familiar with, with those terms. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a big difference because most of the subjects in the Philippines are taught in English. In English, except for Filipino. <laughs> except for Filipino and some history subjects, I think. Right, right. Um, right. And even my, my niece and nephew, the first language that they learned at home was English. And I, they struggled with the Filipino subject in school, which is quite funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's and when they ask me here, why why do Filipinos speak English so well? And right. that's what I say because er, very early, we that's what we hear, right. and that's how we are trained to to speak. And then at work, we you speak you speak English uh, most of the time. All right. So how about the schedules uh, that you have? Are you also required? Because you know how full-time teachers are in the Philippines. Are you required to be there eight hours, lesson plans, and stuff? Is it the same? For me, it's not. So I go to the school to teach, and that's it. Um, I do spend time to prepare for my classes. So I would go there maybe 30 minutes earlier before my class so I can look at my lessons and, you know, think of games to do. Right. Otherwise, you can teach somewhere else, um, get your own teaching gigs. Um, right, at least last year, um, I was teaching maybe three or four hours a day in school. And I don't need to be there because the lessons have been planned for us oh, by the okay. English department. Um, we receive a curriculum right. and we use a book. And they even make the slides for us. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So they, they really prepare uh, the, te the the foreign teachers for, for their classes. And it's like um, it's divided into weeks, divided into um, the type of skill that you want to practice. It's Is it speaking this week? Are we doing reading? Um, even the handouts, they prepare it for us. And then it's up to us to make it you know, a little more exciting and right. fit. It, it should fit our personality too. Right, um, right. So, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty easy. And how many classes do you teach? Um, in a day? Yeah, in a day. I would teach, so for one period, it's 40 minutes. And uh, each class gets two periods with me. Um, and so then, uh, an hour and a half an hour and a half and then like for grade six i see them twice a week okay and then for the grade sevens and grade eights i see them once a week oh wow yeah so that's a very loose schedule so that's why you said you're able to look for other other jobs if you want to you can actually get it yes and a lot of the teachers here have english jobs i have uh, an extra class on saturdays uh, where I teach writing. So you can do that because most of the time the schedule permits. You have your evenings free and you can right. teach in an English center. English centers here exist so the students can study outside of school. So right, right. Yeah. yeah. So they go to the English center after school like 7, 8 p.m. to study English. Is it also, is there like an age bracket or you, it's, it depends on the level? more age bracket okay um so right. yeah that's why i had i had an experience teaching kinder kids and then primary and then um also secondary students go to the okay centers. okay so, but how's the pay so the pay um it's i would make a reference to the pay of the teachers in the philippines the philippines yeah i know that 
full-time teachers there stay all day in school. As you mentioned, they have to prepare for their classes. They do admin work. They check papers. They make reports. Um, and sometimes think, they spend their own money for right for whatever yeah. it is that they need to do in in their class. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe Sorry. for the materials or something. Yeah. Um, and I know that teachers are paid based on their grade level, like yeah. teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, and then there's master teacher. Um, and it could be, it could start from 20,000, like teacher three would be earning 30,000, uh, 30,000 pesos. Let's say 30 to 35. And that's full time. Uh, you're in the school all day, right? Right. But here, if you're in the in the school for three to four hours and everything has been prepared for um you can earn more than half of of the salary of a full-time teacher in the philippines and you can wow. even triple it with you know if you include Other your jobs, part -time. yeah, yeah we well, are part-time yeah. because you may it's possible that you earn more in in a in a writing class and like for example sorry in, a, in an extra class like for me uh, my hourly rate for this writing class is higher than what I get paid for in the school. Because um, you can ask for it. You can say, this is my rate per hour. Right, right. And if they don't pay you, then you can always look for another Something opportunity. Something else, yeah. yeah. And I, I have to say, you, there are so many teaching opportunities here. You really never run out, honestly. Oh, wow. Okay, um, so, but the visa allows it. You can, yes. for as long as you have a work visa, you can work anywhere. Yes. So for you to have your work permit, you need to have uh, an established and registered employer or school. Okay. Right? All right. So yeah. this school or employer becomes your sponsor for your visa and, and work permit or business visa. If you're starting, then you start with a business visa. Um, and then once you get that settled, then you can do other like gigs. Yeah, whatever. Somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Um, so aside from the pay, are there other benefits like health benefits, retirement? Yes. So um, our contract includes insurance. And I believe that I can use it for public health care. Um, but retirement. The only person that I know who has a retirement benefit is an international school teacher. Okay. And it's a school, it's an international school that has campuses in different countries. Right. And I remember him mentioning to me that uh, if he stays there for, I don't know, a decade or more, then if he eventually resigns, then he gets a certain number of pay, like maybe one or one year or two years of, of pay right um for his retirement and okay. yeah so so how do you save for yourself how do you save for your retirement um so i have uh i have insurance in in sun life um and i don't have property uh in the philippines uh i buy funds and and stocks yeah. um so that's, that's good enough. more than good enough yeah do you have a favorite <laughs> do you have a favorite stock um Gosh, so I bought this so many years ago. I have um, I have stocks from Jollibee <laughs> and uh, SMDC. Oh yeah, those SMDC. are those are good. Yeah, try yeah. try like maybe Apple. They're down right now, so eventually when they oh, go up, I, I think they're up. Right I have the Google. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, Apple, uh, Google, because they're down right now. So when they go up, <sighs> so it's a good buy. Anyway, just a tip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. check that later <laughs> after this. Yeah, I like buying when they're down because I know that when they go up, then I get, get my gains. Okay. Do you use an app? Sorry. I have to ask. Uh, yeah, I do. I do have an app, um, but it's an app here. I don't know if it's available in the Philippines or there, but it's called Fidelity. Okay. okay. Fidelity, yeah. So here you can have... Um, you can have a retirement benefit from your employer and you can also have your own. Like you, you can just have, you can just contribute to your own retirement. So Fidelity allows you to do that. You can save for your retirement in the future. So it's like Sun Life. Um, so, and then they also offer stocks. You can also buy stocks individually. Oh, okay, okay. So one of the, the, the tips that my current employer gave me was that buy when it's down. What about the cost of living, though? 
it's, how is it compared to the Philippines? How is it? It's cheap. It's it's more affordable here. So I was in the Philippines last month. Okay. And I was surprised by the prices of Grab Car. This is like our Uber. Yeah. Uh, restaurant uh, prices, even Jollibee <laughs> prices <laughs> have gone up. And um, it's way, way cheaper here. Let's say a bowl of pho. Yeah. So you, you, of course, you go to a local Vietnamese restaurant, right? Right. right. Yeah. And you would pay, um, I don't know, 70 pesos. Let's say 70, 80 pesos for, that's even less than $2 right. for um, a bowl of pho. Yeah. Uh, in the Philippines, one of my friends told me about this. Uh, I know this this popular uh, Vietnamese restaurant, um, but it is a restaurant, you know, that you only find in in malls. And right. a bowl of pho would be four hundred pesos. So um, that's four dollars. Yes. Yeah, compared to less yes. than two. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for the quality of food that we get here and the taste, um, it's just. For us, like for me, it's it's so much better to eat here, to eat out here, <laughs> <laughs> than to cook. Um, I I cook. I have my Filipino ingredients uh, <laughs> right. with me. Um, I do cook like during weekends, but during the day when I'm going from one place to another, then I just stop by, you know, the sidewalk, right, where right. there's a local Vietnamese restaurant and eat there because I'm sure it's delicious anyway. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, true, yeah. true. It's like South Korea. What about apartments? How mu how much do you pay compared to the Philippines? How much is it? Um, so when I was renting in the Philippines, I had I remember I was renting in an old condominium in Makati City. So that was walking distance away from my office, right. and I was paying. Um, that was the cheapest condo that I could find. I could find in in the area. I was paying around twelve thousand pesos, and that was before COVID. Before right. Before COVID. So it's like $250, $225. Okay, $225, yeah. I didn't have a window. It was a box. Oh my God, how did you That's survive? Why it was so cheap. <laughs> That's why it was so cheap. And of course, I had to pay uh, like association dues and right, right. electricity and stuff. Um, but here, I mean, I live in a, in a better apartment, right. in a better studio. Um, I like yeah, windows. <laughs> I yeah, do windows. have windows right here. <laughs> I get proper sunlight. <laughs> um, and I have space. Okay. Um, I have space. It's I have the market. Like when I go down to my to my street, I have the market. I have the vegetables, the fruits, uh, the the local food, laptop repair shop, everything, shoes, clothes, everything is here in my area, and I don't need to spend anything for transpo um and i also got recently got myself a motorbike because a friend of mine um left vietnam and went back to the philippines and oh, okay so you bought her the, yes I, I got her bike and uh today i took it for a spin and it, it runs well <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so your condominium is uh studio type in the philippines yes okay yes. and then i would assume that it's really small <laughs> it was very small. It okay. Was very, yeah, very small. <laughs> but this one is a little bigger, but it's also a studio. It's also a studio. Yeah. Okay. Same price or a little more, a oh, little less? This is, um, I got this for 6 million uh, Vietnamese dong. So this is like 13, 13K. In the Philippines. In, yeah, 13 pesos, uh, 13,000 pesos. So yeah, so right about $225. Yeah. Yeah, that's what do you, and do you need parking? Oh, well, we park our bikes in the garage and it's free. Oh, okay. All right. Cuz nobody rarely do people have cars there, right? Yeah, because of the yeah. space. Right, um, right. Yeah, so every person, every family here has a motorbike. That's their thing about okay. Vietnam. <laughs> motorbike is life. <laughs> right. Um and it, hard to go around without your own bike so you really have to learn like all of my friends here have bikes and eventually i swore not to drive here because i don't drive a bike <laughs> i never <laughs> drove a bike in the philippines but here when i started to drive and i just felt the convenience okay and it's so cheap too 
But is there is there public transportation like buses, trains? There are no trains. Uh, there are buses, and each ride costs around fifteen pesos each ride, okay. and it can take you anywhere uh, around the city. It takes okay. longer, definitely, because right, it has right. stops. Right. And um, actually, cars here drive really slowly because of the motorbikes. Um, okay. Yeah, everywhere. Like when if you're driving a car and you have to do a reverse or you have to turn, you always have to look. Yeah. <laughs> Sideways. Yeah, yeah. Motorbike, yeah. Yeah. I heard motorbikes in the Philippines are also getting popular. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the traffic will do it. we need that. So you said that you're also pursuing a writing program. Is that a but it's not a it's not an MA, it's just a writing program. Yes. Is it online or in person? It's an online writing program. So my um my mentor is in the US. And her name is Jennifer Chesak. She's a journalist and author who recently released her book. And um, I started this in June and we end this August. And I can re-enroll for the next two seasons or semesters if I'd like okay. to. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's called uh, the Middle, Middle Tennessee State University Write Program. Okay. Um, and I found it randomly on Facebook. And then I checked it out. I submitted my application and that application took a while to to make Process, because they yeah. ask they ask for like previous works oh, and wow. you have, yeah you have to write essays about why you want why do you want to be here why should we um let you into the program and uh, they ask you which track you want to study do you want to study because i submitted poetry and um, like essays okay. and I was given the choice if I want to study poetry or or essay writing and I chose essays um, so they match you with uh, an, a mentor okay but is it a grant or you actually have to pay so I had to pay um, I did get partial scholarship for it okay. um, I applied Applied for the BIPOC um, scholarship. So, okay, how, would you? Can you say how much is it? If you don't, if you did not get the scholarship, how much would you have paid? Yes. So I would have paid nine hundred dollars for it for for a year. For no, just for the program itself for the ah. three, three month um, program. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a wow. it's steep. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Steep. It is, yeah, um, but. But by U.S. standards, actually, that's pretty. That's pretty okay. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad actually. But it's it's better that you actually got a grant. Um, how about hobbies and pastimes? What do you have? What does Vietnam has to offer? Um, gosh, Hanoi has so much happening on a regular day. Um, of course, there's the food. There's so much food to try. I don't think you can exhaust the the menu of these. You know, this <laughs> right. Restaurants. There's just right. so much, and um, the museums, uh, the the usual tourist sites like the lakes and the parks. Um, I don't do a lot of these tourist stuff, uh, but I do spend a lot of time in parks, uh, okay. like going for walks and uh, checking out different cafes because it also doubles as my writing time. So I bring my laptop there and spend you know, hours and hours <laughs> uh, in a cafe. And the parks are safe when you're there? Oh, you yeah, feel yeah. safe? Yes. Um, generally, everything is safe here. For me, I don't feel scared about walking in the evening uh, or even using my phone on the street. Right. I don't feel like someone's going to snatch it. Yeah, you can't do that in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, there's no <laughs> weird feeling. You know, it depends on your yeah. location, but... For example, yeah. I was studying in Manila uh, in U in USD, and we'd be very careful of our phones and our backpacks. Right. Um, yeah. But here, I've you know this just happened to me two days ago. I was walking in my street with my bag open. I had my laptop, my wallet. It was like wide open. Uh, right. It was unzipped, and I just realized it when I got into the cafe. And obviously, I checked if everything, everything. was there, and yeah, it was intact. So. Oh, I don't wow. feel yeah. scared about losing yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, it used to be safe here. It's not anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In LA, I mean. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but how did you find uh, teaching? Did you look for it? Somebody recommended you? How did you find that that job vacancy? 
So I was fortunate. I had a friend who had been working here for three years at that time. She's she's left. Um, okay. But she was always inviting me to visit Vietnam. She's like, hey, okay. look, come here. If you come here to Hanoi, stay in my apartment. Um, so I kind of had this um, invitation from her to visit. Right. I never thought about visiting um, the country, though. And then, um, which we will probably discuss later, I decided to leave the Philippines um, and look for a job. And it was teaching that I can do. And um, I, I looked at Facebook groups. Facebook groups is is the way to go um, for okay. teaching jobs because all okay. the schools post in these groups. Expats look for, for jobs in these groups as well. Um, so many connections are made in, in those groups. So Okay. So so you found it there. Um, did, did you find the actual school looking for a teacher? Oh, okay. So... So and then you went there. How did it happen? Did you process your visa in the Philippines, or you had to go there first? So I applied to this English center, and I had to go through interviews. I actually applied to so many schools, right? Um, yeah, and you know, people who post sometimes they they are teachers too. Um, so I sent so many applications, and then this one owner of the English center. Um, we had good interviews and I sent her some videos of myself, like introduction video, videos of myself teaching, um, and it went well. So I was lucky that I got here and a job was waiting for me, um, but I entered the country as a tourist. Okay. And after that, we converted my, um, my e-visa to business visa. So the, okay. this English center was my sponsor for the three-month business visa. And eventually, I left the English center because I wanted to work for a school. Because um, uh, I feel like, you know, it, it, you know the difference in, in the number of, um, of students and also the type of lessons, uh, the interactions that I get would be um, more extensive in a school. Right, so right. I looked for a school and um, I found a secondary school. And the contract is for two years. The visa is also for two years. So it's simultaneous with the work permit. Okay. So when you were applying in the Philippines, you sent all of your the videos and whatever it is that did they ask you to just come there, just go there with a, a visit visa and then convert it there? Or how did or did you decide, okay, I'm just gonna go there and then just continue applying? We definitely talked about the documents. Um okay. I think that's key. Like to those who are in the Philippines and right. looking for jobs here, I would say make sure that it is a legit center or school. Hopefully, you know someone from here who can check that out for you. Um, if you don't, then you know, be an investigator and check them out on Google. Okay. Um, join all of these Facebook groups because all the conversations happen there. Um, and yeah, we discussed about the documents for sure um, because I wouldn't go here without any assurance that right. I would be legally working. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, did you ask you help from your friend to confirm whether the center was, was legit before you go there? Um, I did. I did ask her, but they also have an active Facebook page. So okay. that was so helpful because I knew that, okay, Students actually go to the center and classes right. happen. Right, right. Um, and I did ask my friend to, can you check the location of this this um, center? And is it close to, was it close to her apartment? I wanted to see, because um, I had no preference, uh, you know, point of reference, sorry. Right, right. For the, um, the place. And she's like, yeah, it's like maybe 40 minute motorbike ride from her. Um, and I used Airbnb to, I, I booked an, a room in Airbnb that is closest to that center. Okay. Okay. So from the time that you arrived there with a visitor visa, how long did it take you to actually get, um, to process, to convert your visa to a business visa? Um, it took, um, it took about two months. Okay. Yeah, it took about okay. two months. And I I worked with a reliable um, agency to help me with the visa. And yeah, it would take 
one or two months. Did you have to exit? I had to exit. Yes, okay. I had to exit. I went to Thailand. Um, and then when I went back, I, I entered the country with a business visa. Okay, okay. So two months is, well, okay, so you you had some savings with you, obviously, for you to be able to afford. Okay, so you, it does need some planning as well. Oh, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so you need to have also to so. care for yourself while you're still starting because you're not sure. Right, um, right. You're not sure whether you can get a place to, to sleep and right. your food. You have to have like extra money to support right, right. yourself. Okay, so what's the biggest adjustment that you had to make? Um, aside from the fact that you're away from your family, leaving there all alone, what what adjust? What's the biggest adjustment? Um, I think it's tied to what you just said. The biggest adjustment I had to make was figuring things out on my own um, in a country that does not predominantly speak English. Right. Um, not having friends, not knowing any anybody. Uh, right. just the agent and you know all of these people that you talk to online right um you don't know who to trust in the beginning um so in a way i think you have to you kind of have to trust your gut right um, your intuition and also know who know the people to talk to like know right. where to go go to the official office you know check out if if it's a legitimate uh company right so so how did you solve that not knowing and how did you develop your I mean, I, i'm assuming that you have a community there now how did you develop how did you make friends how did you find them almost everyone that i i know here came from online connections and oh, wow. yeah facebook again the facebook groups i remember posting in a group of filipino teachers saying i'm new here i live here is anyone free to meet um and we just met at a, I, you know there's this one lady who was kind enough to reply to me and um she brought another friend and she has introduced me to some of her other friends um and we, we are still friends until now and um i went as far as using bumble the dating app um right. and the the friend feature like the bff feature to feature look yeah yeah, uh, for a Vietnamese friend, because I couldn't find local friends. Um, and this friend, I'm friends, I'm still friends with her until now. Um, so yeah, online, really online. So it starts online. Yeah. Okay, but was it easy for you to just meet up with people? Are you outgoing by nature? I don't feel scared about these meetings, honestly. Um, because in the in the Philippines, I had the I had a sales background and oh, so okay. meeting strangers and getting to know them um, comes easily for me. Okay. Um, and what I found out to be true through my stay here in, in Vietnam is you really need to take care of these new friendships right? Um, if you want them <laughs> to last long. Yeah. Um, and it pays to be kind and nice to everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even here. So I got here um, 10 years ago. So I was already way in my adulthood. Mm. It was one of the things that I found out. Because when you're young and you meet friends, there's always this common things that you do together. Like you go to school together. So it's like that. Yeah. But when you're older, you really have to make an effort to just so true. maintain the maintain the friendship, maintain the relationship. Okay. So how is how is how are students different? It, it's like from the from the Philippines. What's the like the major thing that you did not expect to find out about uh, Vietnam and the students there? So when I got here, I had this impression that they can be a little cold. Um, okay. Yeah, and because of the language and the way that it sounds and you know how the words are delivered it may also seem that they can be a little rough right <laughs> um but what i found out through my classes is that they can be very sweet and affectionate and just this week i taught primary like grade two students and they came up to me just for a hug 
Um, oh wow, that's sweet. Yeah, they're they're in Filipino. It's malambing. Oh, right, right, um, right. Yeah. They're very aff- affectionate and sweet. And when they like you, and you speak English, <laughs> you know, they really co- come to you and uh, talk to you and uh, show that they care. Um, okay. I need so many letters from my students. I have them here in my apartment, and they they're really sweet when they like you. Um, okay. But also, there's a lot of teasing in the classrooms. And because I teach secondary school students, um, they're growing, they have their hormones. And when they <laughs> teach each other, they can, you know, I, I see some fights, uh, of okay. course, in the classroom. And when that happens, you just have to say or to, to tell your uh, Vietnamese counterpart about what's going on in the class. Because um, obviously, I don't allow fighting in the class. Well, of course, yeah. Have you, it has, so also, it actually happened right in front of you, the fighting. Oh, yes. Okay. On the first day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the first day, yeah. So, but, but is it fighting and not bullying? Because that's an entirely different story if it's bullying. Um. It has happened in one of my grade seven classes when one of my um, gentler and Students. smart, yeah, one of the gentler and and smarter boys uh, was bullied by everybody, mm-hmm. um, and then he cried, and I had to. When these things happen, you really have to have the discussion, a private discussion with them outside of the classroom, and mm-hmm. find out how they feel. Um, so yeah, um, yes. There, there are, there is uh, bullying, and I did ask the the students about it, and they all say yes. It, it still happens. Yeah. Okay. So, do, does the parent get involved or no? Um. Well, they get involved. They are very involved with grades of of the students, but uh, for <laughs> us, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so our school is actually quite popular for math and science um, curriculum. Uh, okay. Okay. So, a lot of the parents bring their their children there for them to you know excel, really excel in these subjects. Um, so for at least for me uh, as an English teacher, I um, I only get to I don't get into conversations with the parents directly. But if there's something uh, disruptive in the class, then I have to report that to you know the Vietnamese team and they. I ask them to tell the parent if, the, you know, the the teasing is too much or there's too much like physical um, um, hitting in the class. So okay. the parents so, have to know. Yeah. So is it? But how about their culture? Is it very Westernized now? Do they uh, ad- adapt a lot of the Western culture, or still no. very much local? Not as Western as the Philippines. Um, like I said, when you go to the Philippines, everything, all the signs are in English. And here, it's not like that. All the signs are in Vietnamese. <laughs> and it's really the opposite. Um, however, my, my students are very into YouTube and TikTok and um, Instagram, social media. Mm-hmm. That's, I found out about Mr. Beast through them. <laughs> um, and PewDiePie and, and Roblox, you know, all these things that they teach me. Um, so, yeah, they know these things, the video games, the popular um, things of, uh, you know, that they see on social media. They know all of these. Um, and some of them, they're very comfortable in using English because they learn through Netflix and YouTube okay. since they were young, like Coco right. Melon, um, Peppa Pig. So they these things they they're they're helpful to them as well. So and but K-pop. in terms of oh so they're into K-pop they're as well. Into K-pop. Yeah. Okay. So but so Western celebrities are not very much into that. Um, they do know them. Uh, I have this a little surprising encounter uh, in a class where I showed photos of um, Beyonce, and they didn't know her. Um, so to me that was a little. Uh, shocking but they do right. know taylor swift they do know the rock um <laughs> <laughs> it's so just interesting to find right. out what they know and what they don't know okay are they so are they into the hip-hop culture they must be because they're into k-pop yes they love k-pop um hip-hop i they listen to their own music 
Um, oh, I have students okay. recommending, you know, Vietnamese songs to me, and um, yeah, but they also listen to to pop music, like English music. Okay, but there is a select few from West. So just for the sake of my Korean K-pop uh, viewers, who are the like the top three most popular K-pop <laughs> groups? There? Oh, they love Blackpink and BTS. Okay. Okay. Um, Red Velvet, Twice. Oh wow! This is so. I taught really small kids this week. They're like right. five, six, and one of them I caught her with cards of Blackpink, <laughs> and it was on her desk. She's so small, <laughs> and she had Blackpink cards. And then two other girls were dancing steps <laughs> of a Blackpink song. Right. <laughs> um, and actually, Blackpink is having a concert here at the end of July. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So how, So you said it's a two-year contract and you're halfway through it. So you have, what's your next plan? Are you going to extend? Are you going to go back to the Philippines or move to another country? Yeah, so uh, this is, you know, this is the difficulty of having so many options i think having that freedom to choose right. um because right now i do have the option to stay in my school like after my visa ends but i do think that this is probably the time to go and visit the places that i've been wanting to visit okay. um like i want to explore europe i haven't been there and um that would take some preparation, but I do have some friends who who can welcome me if I go. Um, so I'd like to to go there. I don't know, maybe as a tourist or maybe look for a job because I know that some countries in Europe employ English teachers as well. Oh um, yeah, yes. Like Spain has many Filipino teachers. Um, yes, like Italy has some English centers. But I just need to, you know, I have to read up on how the visa works. Yeah. So you're headed west. You you don't have plans of going back and staying in the Philippines yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your writing. Um, I know that writing is actually your your passion. So how did you get into it? How did you start writing? How did you know that this is something that you really want to continue doing? Um, so from from how you started writing to how did you get published? How was the journey? Yes, so I started writing when I was a little girl. I remember having a very small notepad, the one with bunnies and, and <laughs> dogs, um, <laughs> where I wrote stories about my day. And I wrote oh. about my classmates. And I had no idea. It was a journal. I just knew that it was kind of a diary. Um, mm -hmm. And they're gone. Those small notebooks are gone. But I did keep writing. Um, I just felt like mm, it was a natural, I had a natural inclination to expressing myself through writing. And in high school, I did get into, I did write some articles for the school paper. Um, and then after college, I had these small writing gigs. I never, ever thought of having books. I never thought about making writing a big part of my life. Um, okay. until I think it was always nudging me and um, I always had ideas also in, I, when I was in, in university I was writing songs and I had a band um, oh wow yeah so I had like these poems and then right. I learned how to use the guitar when I was in high school so we were playing small gigs in cafes and in seminaries because <laughs> that's the only place where we can get gigs. Right. Um, and so the writing continued until I started writing essays, um, maybe, I don't know, three or four years ago. Okay. Um, when, I, when I became comfortable writing about my life um, okay. and for people to, to read, when I felt like, oh, maybe I can share a lesson through this experience. Right, right. So the the first two books that you have, however, are all poems or yes. some of the, okay. So the first one was uh, poems about love, right? Yes. Okay, and then the other one, love and travel. Um, so when did you? I would assume that I haven't read a book, um, but I will be giving away some to my audience. But so I I haven't read the book, but can you describe how? When did you start writing all the poems that you included there? Um, and also, how did you find the publisher? So the poems were written 
years and years back. Okay. Um, they were some of the songs that I wrote and uh, I just wrote them in a notebook. And uh, during COVID period, I had so much time. And also I went through a surgery and I went through a recovery period. So I couldn't do anything. Um, that was the time when I was able to look at my old things. And I checked old journals and I had something here. And then I picked and collected and, and gathered um, and reworked uh, these poems. At that time, I was also actively writing on medium.com. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but now I don't do that anymore. But that's when I had, I kind of discovered that I can write essays and then poetry and I can combine them. So these two okay. books have essays uh, in them too. Okay. Okay. So how and, did you find the publisher? Yes. So I started looking, I started self-published. Um, I was selling the books myself in the Philippines and COVID came and then, um, after that, I left the Philippines and I thought I can't handle the marketing and sales of my books in the Philippines anymore. Okay. Um, I would love to continue promoting it on my social media sites, but the actual prints, they have to be somewhere and they have to be in the hands of someone that actually sells books. So right. I uh, looked at Instagram, who are these publishers that have you know, the message that I'm looking for? And I stumbled upon eight letters. It's a local publisher in the Philippines. They have a good following on Facebook. And I reached out to them. They were so responsive. Um, but of course, these conversations take a little long. Um, right. So it took maybe two months of, of exchange before we finally settled on a contract and what they're going to do. I had a team working with me um, diligently. And so I'm, I'm really glad I found them. Okay. So do you are, are you tied to any number of books that you need to publish in like a certain number of years? Or is it like when I get one, I'll send it to you and you can go ahead and publish it? Yes. Um, no, the, the contract does not work like, um, like you have to publish a, a certain number of books. But okay. since I've had my books before uh, and then it went through them, uh, if I have another book coming out, then I can always submit it to them and they can distribute it to, uh, in the Philippines. Okay. All right. Um, so th what's the next, uh, when's the no next book coming? Yes. Yeah, so I have uh, the third installment of the Rhymes and Recollection series. The third one is Hands That Carry, a collection of poems on family, which is sitting in my drafts folder. Um, <laughs> but I'm. this is... This is something I should do this year. Um, but because of the writing program, the only thing I can write is the this book of essays that I'm writing about my life. My first year here in Vietnam. Um, okay. um, because I need to reach a certain word count for it. Ah, uh, um, okay. So are yeah. you going to publish this book as this, well? The uh, Your life as uh, first year in Vietnam? Are you going to yes. publish that as well? Oh, yes. okay. Is it going to be under the same publisher or a separate publisher? Um, I've seen some. So my dream for this book, because it's about Vietnam, I, my right. dream for the book is for it to be distributed in Asia. Okay. And I've seen some, you know, like international publishers that can do that. And hopefully, um, you know, when I finish the book, I would submit it to them and, and see what they say. Okay. So just a little uh sneak peek at your writing process how do you come up with ideas is it based on this something tragic has to happen for you to write something or, dramatic. <laughs> or is it or you just tell yourself no i'm gonna write today and whatever comes will come how is it for you so i think years ago i've decided that i want writing to be part of my life and it's no longer a hobby um so I write about everyday life events. I write about my students. If I, if I hear of something interesting in class, like a lesson that I can make a story about, then I would write about it. Um, of course, I, I write about memories and, and past experiences and looking back, what were the lessons that I learned from those experiences? Um, so yeah, the, the book that I'm writing is... It's like a part memoir, part travelogue. 
Okay. Um, so, so you write every day? I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, I, I commend mean, you. <laughs> of course, there are busy, busy days when right. you just cannot sit. But yeah. um, I would say that I try my best to, to write something, even if it's just like 10 sentences. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, just a little bit before we end, just I, I want the audience, of course, to get to know you a little better. Um, maybe something uh, you may or may not answer whatever you want, but what made you leave the Philippines? So uh, so I was in the Philippines. I was actually waiting for uh, my fiancé visa to get approved. I was engaged. Ah. Um, and because of COVID and you know, reasons that he had. <laughs> um, Where was he? Oh, he, he lives in, in Washington State. Okay. In the All US. Right. Okay. And so we ended the relationship. We ended the relationship March last year. And then I left the Philippines May, like two or three months after. And I oh, think it okay. was, yeah, I think I wanted to, to restart somewhere else. I didn't feel like I would be able to do that with in the, in the Philippines and with everybody, you know, kind of watching what's gonna happen to you after right. this <laughs> tragedy. Um, but it, yeah, it was more. Um, it wasn't self discovery, but really just starting somewhere else and trying to replace the life that I was already planning for myself right. and, right. and, you know, having a family and all of that. And you're fine now. You're happy. You're, you've moved I on. Think, I think so. I am, okay. I'm not in a relationship right now, but okay. um, it's, I'm, you know, there's friends and there's writing and there's work. So are you ready for a new one? Um, I think so. Okay. All right. Yeah. Maybe I'm, somebody from Europe. <laughs> mm, maybe. Um, I was telling my, my friends the other day, I'm ready to settle down next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you answered this a little bit. Um, so you said that you don't want to, not yet, you don't want to go back to the Philippines. But do you see yourself retiring in the Philippines? And if you do, like, what's the big, do you have a big project in mind that I will do this when you go back to the Philippines or something? Oh, man. Um when i go back to the philippines yeah or do you even see yourself like retiring there maybe um honestly not really oh <laughs> i i don't um i like being an expat in a way i like okay. the freedom and i like the learning that i get from living outside the the confines of home i think okay. um i do like staying long in in a place and building uh, foundations and and relationships there um which is what i'm doing here like I, i'm trying to build deep friendships and stuff um but right now my main focus is the books the books that i would like to write and uh maybe take further studies on creative writing later on okay yeah. what's what's your big big writing dream dream like what's what's your what's the oscar award for you <laughs> oh, wow the oscar award would be having my book turned into a movie would be extremely ah, okay. exciting um, okay yeah. Do you want do you want to write like a TV series or a, a TV special or a movie? Um not really, but uh maybe I I I know this book uh that got turned into a TV series and it was not um you know closely linked to the story of the book, but right. a lot of the the characters and just the tone of the book uh, got turned into a show and i kind of like that like for example like a new sunrising maybe that can be i don't right. know something like <laughs> right okay well um th that th those are all my questions um to everybody who is watching i'm actually going to give away 10 copies of odisa's book for as long as there is a store that can deliver the book 
to you just let me know uh you can either send me a dm on on twitter or you can send me a private message or a direct message or just comment in the video here in youtube so that uh, you get to experience i will also be reading her book so i hope that you get to experience that as well and then um if you want to get in touch with odisa the links should be on your screen right now for her website and for her instagram is there anything else that you want to plug you want to let people know on September, there's the Manila International Book Fair happening in the Philippines. So it's in it's in SMX Convention Center. Um, September 16, I'm doing a book signing there. Uh, oh. Of course, the copies of my books will be there. I'll be under the eight letters booth. I'm so excited. That's why I'm going home in September. Um, okay. So, All right. Well, I hope you can see her there. Um, <laughs> I, I can't go home in September, but, <laughs> but I'm sure I'm pretty sure I'll meet you someday. And I hope that someday I can get you back, especially if you move to another country. Maybe we can talk about that country for a change. I hope so. And it was such a pleasure talking to you, Fairly. It was thank a pleasure. You for having thank you. Me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.